family. Thank you for tuning into Our Roots Podcast with Joseph Babaifa. We're only the strongest roots see the light. Brought to you by Botanica Candles and more. And if you haven't had the opportunity, please tap on that like button and hit that subscribe button. New episode today. But before we get into it, I want to go ahead and mention all of our membership program members. Beginning with our supporter level. Shout out to Mel T, Nicole XO, like it really is. Followed by our premium super fan level, Punk and Maddox, Kenya Hutton, All the Difference 2012, and then our VIP supporters, beginning with Noble, Laja Rocks, Queen Liquid Waters B, Box Chevy Champ, Donna Moon Goddess, Robert C. Fuentes Jr., Exhibit A and Y, Street Tuber, Aishani Bush, and Argelia. Thank you guys so much. And if you haven't signed up for the membership program, get on it. Exciting episode today, guys. One that we've been waiting to do for quite some time. One that you've been waiting for us to do for quite some time. Um, Ifa and Yemaya. This Orisha means quite a bit to us. And today we have a very esteemed guest who has this Orisha crowned. And apart from that, she is the owner of Botanica Dos Aguas in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Please join me in welcoming Miss Arkia Omiaina. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here. I feel like we know each other already. Yeah, it's, I we, think so too. It's, it's probably like the other energy, the spiritual energy or the Ifi energy, some kind of energy. That's what it is. You know, we've been interacting and um, we've traded information. We, we've talked and um, I, I really appreciate you guys coming from so far, um, especially Atlanta, to come visit us here in Orlando, you, your family, your crew. And um, we're really excited to talk about Yamaya, right? Um being that I was born from Yemaya, my wife was born from Yemaya, I'm definitely an Orisha that we hold in very high regard in my home. But before we get into Yemaya, we want to get into you. Okay. So where are you from and what's your background? Actually, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Atlanta, Southwest Atlanta. And about 18, about 18 years old, I moved to Clayton County, south side of Atlanta, Georgia. My background is African-American. Um Growing up in the city of Atlanta and just moving around throughout the metro parts of Atlanta and just, I guess that's the answer to the question. <laughs> and and, and spiritually, what um what's your background there? Like, how what were your beginnings spiritually? Spiritually, I grew up Christian. Now, when you say spiritual, are you talking about my religious beliefs or like my Agun court? Uh, well, just the things that happened before Ifa came into your life. Okay, well, that's an interesting story because I started off um, in Christianity. I'm a pastor's kid. Wow. And my mother's a musician, and she was actually the minister of music in the church that I grew up in. And she played for different churches all the time. And my dad was pretty much stable with his home church. And having a Christian background, I really it never really sat well with me as a child. I'm not saying I didn't believe it, but I just felt like bits and pieces of the story were missing And after I just said, okay, the church thing isn't for me, I actually started studying Nietzsche and Buddhism. So I chanted for a while. I chanted for about two years, and that kind of hit a dead end with me. And that's my religious background. I studied, you know, Islam for a while. I read the Quran. I've done a couple of different things on a spiritual journey, trying to figure out exactly who I was and what was going to be home for me and what I would resonate with. I tell you, I love those kind of journeys because it takes you to a place where you know where you want to be when you find it, you know, after Absolutely. experiencing so many different things. I mean, with me, even though I was born and raised Catholic, I'm, I'm from Hialeah, and, you know, that's the national religion of Hialeah is Ifa, right? So somehow or another, you're falling into it. But someone such as yourself, coming from a place where Ifa is really penetrating now, going right. through a renaissance period now, Maybe 20 years ago, it was something that was completely off the radar or completely unaccepted. So you having gone through all these different, you know, spiritual processes and arriving at Ifa, I, I feel like those are the people that are meant to stay, you know? That's a definite. I'm definitely at home. Um, my first encounters with Ifa were, you know, so significant in the things that were being told to me and helped develop me into what I am right now, the, Ifa's just beautiful, and it's, I'm definitely at home here. Yeah, and that, and you hear that a lot, the home concept, because, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of initiating a lot of African-American people from church backgrounds, and 
even though, you know, at the end of the day, a place of worship is pure, it's wonderful. A lot of people say that, Joseph, I feel out of place and I don't feel home, you know? So that's why they end up coming to an ATR or, you know, something more indigenous because they're trying to find out what were we before church? Who were we? You know, were these the same questions you were asking yourself? That's a definite. Um, I've always kind of challenged, challenged things. I'm a little bit of a rebel. My dad would always say when I was in church, I would sit and look at the pastor, you know, whoever was talking, and I'm looking like, that cannot be the whole story. And this didn't come from that, and that goes against science. I just had a lot of questions that, that things just, they, the church could, simply couldn't answer for me. I was like, yeah, but mm, I don't think this is, you know, everything that I'm going to need to know because it was just too many gaps and holes left in things when you talk about the Immaculate Conception. And I'm just like, that's not humanly possible. No, so no. what are you really saying? You know, is this going into metaphysics or, you know, is it just an analogy? Somebody tell me something and nobody can answer these questions for me. And it just got to the point where I just quit asking. Yeah, you become frustrated. You feel a little isolated as well because at the end of the day, it's going to cause not only frustration to you, but the people who either don't know how to answer you or don't want to answer you. And that was an issue, too, inside of the church. When you challenge things, it's just like it just is, and that's what it is. And you, I just couldn't accept that. I was like, well, if you want me to believe in this, then you're going to have to at least answer some of these questions. And it, it got to the point where, you know, they started perceiving it maybe – even as being disrespectful, but I just felt like I had a, a bigger brain or, you know, just things need to be answered. This is not the whole story. You were a daughter of Yamayami, huh? <laughs> you guys don't take anything at face value. You know, you have to go below the surface to know yes. what's at the bottom of the ocean. And that's that's y'all's characteristics. And that's why by nature, we find a lot of intelligence in you guys. We find a lot of logic, you know. But being somebody that was a pastor's kid, being somebody really raised in the church, what was that response like when you're like, hey, I'm an African priestess in the new world? Well, initially when I started practicing, um, my sister, she she was very open to it because she's now Santana. Shout out to Catherine. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> she's going to love that. Oh, man, shout out. Um, My friends kind of really, they backed up off of me severely. They was like, hey, this is not what we do. This is not how we grew up. Wow. And, you know, and, you know, for lack of better words, you know, I got demonized for a long time. I mean, they ostracized me. They didn't want to come around me anymore. And I got to the point where I was like, okay, well, look, I know I'm not stopping doing what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. And eventually, either you're going to come around and accept it or you're going to have to keep it moving. And with my father, you know, he's a man of great faith. Yes. Great, great faith. Um, the best way to say what he said is he told me, um, Arkea, there's no quarrel amongst just men. And I've raised you to be a just woman. He was like, I don't know what this is, but I know God. And if it was not of God, you would not be able to participate. Wow. And Catherine actually went with me before I went to go do um, OSHA. And we explained to him exactly in the best way that we could what it is that I was doing. And my father sent me with his blessing. Oh, man. And that meant the world to me. Oh, yeah, because you need it, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, what's his name, Pastor what? Arthur Allen. My regards, because that's a man of theology. That's an educated man. Yes. And, um Sometimes a pastor has to know a little bit more than his flock. Yes. And sometimes that means you have to understand what's going on in the next field, you know, whether you're grazing over there or not. Right? And it, it's funny now because actually I have him reading The Way of the Orisha. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, no. That's a man of theology, you know, whether it's Christianity. Just the thing is this, right? To be a man of faith, you can't only read your book. This is true. You have to go through that library. When you're going through pastor school and things like that, There, you have to look at other things because how do we defend what we believe in? Exactly. Do we need to defend what we believe in even? you know? So right. my regards to him for supporting you because I do the same thing for my children and my parents did it for me, even though it was off the beaten path. Like when I did the interview with my mother, you know, she explained she was terrified. And that's even us being from an area where this is something you see every day. Because, right. you know, it's not the same to be, you know, around it as in it, you know. So, you know, just seeing the progress I made and her recognizing it. But even when she didn't know the specifics, she knew the same thing your father knew about you. 
and you know the crazy thing is that now that people have seen my progression and they see where I am the and results see, I think um I have three or four friends that actually have gone through the process of receiving mono de Arula. wow they've actually I don't want to say converted because this is a way of life but they actually practice now that's so, incredible yeah they they're moving forward you know, Ifan or Disha moves through you. And, and that's the most beautiful thing is nothing against anybody who proletizes and whatnot, but you feel the call for Ifa. You recognize Ifa and those people you respect, and you're being a beacon to that community. Even if it's only beginning with your circle, it surely grows because they see those results. They see that progress. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I think after my second year of OSHA, I've been bombarded with people with questions and I'm having to answer these questions. And it's like you said, it's like a beacon of light. It's almost like you're just walking and people are like, hey, what are those on your neck? Or what is, what's going on here? What type of store is this? It's, it's always people just asking questions and really want to know. But that lets me know that there is, you know, a true and sincere need. Oh, yeah. It is a need for people to be spiritually liberated, in my opinion. They need to be spiritually liberated. These are things that need to be discussed. They need to know what their heritage is. They need to know where they come from and what they practiced initially. This is when we got off of a boat or wherever they took us to. Yeah. That's not what we were practicing. And, yeah. you know, when I say things like that, people think I'm a little, you know, she's like I've been told she's a rebel. She thinks differently. But these are facts. And you can't argue with facts. No, there had to be something before because it's where, how did we get here? Exactly. You know, especially if things didn't start here. So, when did you first hear about Yemaya? Um, the first time I heard about Yemaya was actually over in Tampa. I had some weird things going on um, in my house. A friend of mine was uh, murdered, and I couldn't get any peace in my house. I was like not really knowing what was going on, and at that time. My coworker was living with me. I was helping her out, and she was staying with me. And I just got up and I left. I went to my husband's house. I was like, I can't stay there. Something's wrong there. And I came back home one day just to grab some clothes. And she says, Kia, why are you why are you leaving? I was like, Well, I tried to explain to her. I didn't know how she was going to receive what I was going through. Yeah. She said, Well, I didn't want to say anything, but there's been a guy standing in your corner oh, wow. for three days. Wow. She can actually see spirits. Wow. So. When I told her that, she said, listen, my mom is a Santetta. And that was my first time ever hearing the word Santetta. Yeah. And she was like, you need some help. I said, yes, I need some help. <laughs> because I can't tell my dad, the, past, the pastor, that, yeah. you know, something's going on in my house. He's like, what do you mean? But I actually went to see her. And after she read me and I actually received a couple of things, my coyardes, and I received the imagua. Mm-hmm. She sent me away, and when I was leaving, she made her daughter stop. Because remember, I didn't speak any Spanish at the time. And yeah. She made her daughter translate to sure. me. She said, "Honor, yay, my ya more. She loves you very much." And I was like, "Yay, my ya." I was like, "What is that?" Because I was familiar with Oshun. Because a lot of people thought that I was Oshun's daughter when I got to her house. They were like, "Oh, yeah, definitely Oshun," and maybe it's because I look like mulata or something. Yeah, like yeah, that the nature. vibe, right? And I was like, oh, okay, they tell me this about Oshun, they tell me this, but when she told me, yeah, my God, I said, okay, it is my duty to find out more about yeah, my God, who is this Orisha? I need to know more because the woman told me so much about myself, and this is a person I never met before in my life, and her daughter didn't know the detailed things and the intimate things about yeah. me. So I trusted her word. I was like, okay, if she says I need to honor yeah, my God, let me go and read and figure out what it is that I'm honoring. And what did you think when you found out a little bit about this woman? We have a lot of similarities. <laughs> um, not to sound, you know, stereotypical or that all gay my y'all children are a certain type of way, but a lot of her attributes I definitely possess. There, there was no if, answer, buts about it, and I definitely resonated with her immediately. She has a lot to resonate with. She's a cookie. Yeah. Um, when you go through your hand of Ifa, then, was were you expecting it to be her? Did you ask for her? Did they ask for twenty people first? Or listen, um, it's gonna sound absurd, but it lets me know that my it won't work. Mm -hmm. um, she actually told me. She told me in a dream before I did Mano de Arula. Um, I would go to my godfather's house. Um, Owani Okana, my godfather, I love him. Shout out, Danny. Um, 
I would go to his house whenever I had the opportunity, and I would bother everybody. Like how your saint said, I would go and I would get the bell and ring it for about the lie. Are you sure. my daddy? Or go shake the maraca and go, are you my dad? Or, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm bugging everybody. And I yeah. did that for probably a good, you know, three to six months. And eventually, I guess they just got tired of me asking. And I fell asleep one night and had a dream. I was in the dream. I got struck by lightning. Oh, wow. My hair what started off in a dark blue and went into an aqua blue and my wrist actually split open in this dream and blue flames oh, came out of my wrist. And when I sat down on the mat and they asked me, who do you think your Orisha is? I was absolutely certain it was Yemaya. So you were a first shot? One time and that was it. I knew she was my mother. That's impressive. Yeah, she told me. Because usually, especially when we're getting involved or we're first learning, everybody hears Oshun, we're going for Oshun first. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, so that's really impressive. You know? My second guess would have been Shango. Because, sure, with you the know, flames out of the veins, right, you know, that, what that else are you going to think? Right, but it was definitely her. And blue has always been my favorite color as a child. And I could swim by the time I was two. You're doing I, much better than me. I still don't know how to swim. <laughs> I'm going to teach you. I got you. I still don't know how to swim. I got you. I got you. I'm going to take you right to the beach. But the, the flames make a lot of sense because your father is? I got you. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And with a name like Omina, I mean, I think ultimately you were having a revelation there. Definitely. You know, because when you look at when you go through the process of Ita and all these divine messages are confirmed, it lets us know that as we start walking the path, little by little, they start letting you know who you were before. They did. They you know. did. And definitely the path of Yeh, my God, with the warrior, I was always, you know, a tad bit of a, a spark, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, I challenged things. I rode horses. I was a just a warrior. I didn't take any mess off of anybody at any time, no matter how small I may be. My dad is like, this kid is really like something else. Yeah. It's like we got to kind of get her under control. But it wasn't a bad thing. It's just that I you was had a character. Yeah. And that makes, that makes a lot of sense because Yemaya did have a character. And when we look at the Camino or the, 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 the manifestation of Ogunte, you know, everybody says Okute, mm -hmm. um, but it, in, a, in a more rustic form, it's Ogunte, Ogunte, which means she who walks with Ogun, she who is around Ogun, she who betrayed Ogun. Oh, wow. Right? Because okay. what occurred was is um, they were married, right? Mm -hmm. But um, the dog saw Yemaya doing something she wasn't supposed to be doing. You know, we won't get into specifics. Okay, yeah, tell me that later. But, um, <laughs> you know, the dog snitched on her. Oh, wow. And Ogun found out, and he confronted her, and she didn't lie to him. She said, yeah, that's what it was. And he cut her head off. Oh, wow. Right? So I got to watch Ogun's children, clearly. <laughs> no, you got to be careful with the dogs, because Ogunte, the first thing it says is be careful with the dog, because the dog betrayed Yemaya. That's why it's like Yemaya and the dog. Like is very, the dog. It's a very iffy thing, right? Right. But the most impressive thing about that pataki is Yemaya didn't care. She's like, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to be something I'm not. Does that resonate with you, ultimately? You have no idea. I What you see is what you get. I have been in situations where the truth probably would have, you know, cost me some serious consequences. But being the person that I am, I feel like lying to anything or anybody just goes against what I believe. You know, I'm not afraid of anything, you know, so... I respect things, yeah. but a fear that's not something that's natural to me, being afraid. So I feel like lying is like almost like a form of fear, you know, and in personal situations, if I love someone, I never, ever want to lie to them, you know, and I've, I've done some things in my life that I'm not so proud of, but I've never, ever looked at a person I loved and told them a lie to their face. If I ever got caught doing something I was supposed to do, it's always going to be the truth for me. And, no, and that's a beautiful process. There's nothing better to live the truth. And that's why it says the water gets dirty, but it'll clean up eventually. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm does. saying? Right. So there's really nothing that you guys can't come back from. And, and Yemaya is always trying to reiterate that because the, the children, when they go through things, they take it very much to the chest. It's like, I did this. I feel horrible about it. I want to languish in it. Right. But she's like, you got to move on. Yes. You know? And uh, we're going to delve into a relationship now between two women that, you know, your botanica says is are inseparable, yes. right? People, you guys are always asking me, Padrino or, or Baba, what is it to be a child of Dos Aguas? What is the Dos Aguas? So, you know, I think in being that we've already touched so much about Ochung or on Ochung in this channel, I think it's appropriate here. In the Odu of Odiche, there's a pataki that speaks of when Ochung was very poor. 
And she went to divination with Orumela to see how she could better herself, right? And really come up because the poverty was making her very depressed. When divination was performed, the Odu of Odisha was revealed, where Oshun was told to perform sacrifice to Yemoja, right? Her mm-hmm. sister. Now, mind you, they had had a little bit of a rift, right? Because Yemaya had made some decisions that put her in a much better space economically. Oshun was a little bit younger. She didn't want to listen, but she had to bite the bullet and go see her sister, right? And Yemaya lived at the meeting point between the ocean and the river, right? right? The right. Dos Aguas. Dos Aguas. And when Oshun rolled up, uh, yeah, my, I was on edge because she's like, oh, it's about to pop off, right? <laughs> so, but Ochun didn't do that. She went, she gave the offering, and Yamaya was really perplexed. She's like, we haven't spoken. We have a little bit of beef. What is this all about? You know, she said, if I said that, I have to do this to better my life. So whether it's you actually giving me something or it's us just being on good terms, I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. And if it leads to nothing, it is what it is, you know? Yemaya was so moved about that because she had actually not cursed her sister, but she had negative energy because she's like, why are we at war? You know, why are we allowing people to get between us? You know, they embraced and Yemaya said, I'm going to make you wealthier than you even know what to do with. This is all I was waiting for because I wanted to make sure you had the maturity level to be able to handle all that I'm going to give you. And she made Ochun, her sister, very wealthy, being that Yemaya distributed Olokun's wealth, right? Yes. And Ochun was so appreciative. She said, your daughters are my daughters, your children are my children, and there's nothing I won't do for them. And that's where the child of the Dos Aguas comes, where Yemaya and Ochun have to be on the same level. So, you know, hearing all this information, I mean, what's your relationship like with Ochun? Just that, exactly what you said. It's it's just like that. My um, In my crowning ceremony, I had a smaller sapera for Ochun because that's what I could afford at the time, but... During the, the reading of the Ita, it says, no, her sopera has to be the same size as Yemaya because she's just as much as Ochun's daughter as she is Yemaya's. And I was birthed from two Ochun's, um, Olochun Day, and I can't remember my y'all bonus name, but Yaima Trachis, I love you, lady. <laughs> um, I was birthed from two Ochun's, so, they're very much, so my mother, Ochun, is... Almost everything, just as much as my mother as Yemaya. And the reason why I say this is that when you think about the relationship between a mother and daughter, everything can't necessarily be discussed. This is some sure. things that you, you know, you want to be able to tell your mom everything, but you can't go tell your mom about your, you know, your There's boyfriend. There's limits, you know, right. yeah. Oh, Chum? Oh, I tell her everything. All the she tea. Had, she has my secrets. <laughs> She knows my dirt, and I'm, when I'm getting dirt, I'm like, hey, Ma, I need some help She's over spicy. here. She's <laughs> spicy. Right. So my relationship with Ochun is absolutely beautiful. I, I depend on her, and that's when it comes to each and every one of the Orishas, I feel like an individual really has to personalize that relationship with that Orisha. And, you know, it was easier for me to establish personal relationships like kind of associating them with relationships that I've had with actual human beings. Sure. You know, and it's, and I talk and I speak and I love the same way I love in the physical. I know it sounds kind of, you know, different, but you have to personalize your relationship with your Arisha. Well, they're your family. Definitely. You know, when you're going through the worst times in your life and, you know, there's times when you feel like you can't talk to somebody or anybody about something, those pots are always there. Yes. You just move that lid and the amount of response you get, the amount of relief you get. You know, it's crazy because in the Odu of Chebara, it says when the uninitiated people would see the initiates of Ifa speaking to, like, the nature and, and like, the elements in it, they thought they were crazy. But right. they looked at them and they were like, but those people are doing better than us. Yes. You know, so we stick talking to our pots because it gives us good results and people right? don't like and my kids and both of them have been have mono day or rule and I'm nice like, yeah i have my kids initiated and um they would look like what's going on with mom and now my son does not leave the house without speaking to eleguano about the lie my daughter is eleguano's daughter so every day and they know if i'm not here and if it's something you can't handle please go speak and that's been that's in I guess basically woven into the fabric of who we are as a family now. This Beautiful. is what happens. They know where to go. They know what to do. They know what they to say to them. Like this is they watch like in the beginning. Mom is down here. 
she's knocking on the floor. You yeah, know? right. They're whispering yeah. like, "What? What's mommy doing?" Well, the friends come over. They're like, "Man, just what's what's your oh, mom doing? Just man. keep it moving." No, let me tell you, it's a funny story. And I promise I won't go too far on the subject, <laughs> but. When I bought my house, um, I had my Warriors sitting in my garage. And, I mean, they were actually in the corner, and I had just finished doing Ebo. Because nice. I'm moving to a new house. And my neighbor, she comes uninvited, and she sees the goat head with Ellie Guadalupe. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> the lady. That's why you got to knock. Right. But know. the garage was wide open because, you know, I'm cleaning it out and doing everything. That lady said, she did, I don't think she knew what to She said, what is that? <laughs> That's why my grandma used to holler before she even walked in front of people's house. She's like, can I walk in front of you? <laughs> don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. You know? Right. So, you know. Yeah, funny story. But you mentioned your children. Yes. Um, Yemaya is known as Iamila Deo, which means my mother has the crown, right? Yes. How, how important was it to get your children involved? That was major. Yeah. That was major. Knowing what protection a ruler provides and what the Orisha provide. I would not have my children walking around unarmed. You know, yeah. when I say unarmed, that means I don't know their destiny. I don't know what to do to help them. I don't know what they're going to be good at, what needs to happen here. You know, does my son or daughter have long life or short life? And as a mother and being yay, my God's daughter, my initiative, my first job is to protect my babies. Um, there's no way that even my grandchildren, I'm already planning for, you know, grandbabies yeah, when I course. have them. This is something that we're going to do. And the reason why Ifa is so important to me is so that we don't forget. I don't want us to go backwards anymore. You know, yeah. this is what we do. Riri Taj, this is what you guys have to do. This is our lineage. This is what we're going to do. This is our culture at this point. We don't go backwards. We're moving forward. And I wanted my kids protected. I wanted to know who had their head so I know how to best help my children. You have nothing but my uh, my commendations because the reason Yemaya is really recognized as the mother of the world is because she gave the legacy of Ifa to everybody on earth. And to see you saying this about your children, you're reliving it, you know, yes. in the flesh and in the present. Because in the Odu of Ogunda Trupo, it speaks of when Yemaya had two very rambunctious children, right? One was Oshosi and the other was Inle. And they were very bad. Oh. Good. But they were just out there, you know. Stuff. Yeah, bad. They were always in the jungle, hunting things, killing a lizard. You know, they were they were all over the place. Right. But the issue was, is you know, when you're young, you don't realize when you have enemies the same way your mother realizes, right? You know, and your mom's like, "Hey, be careful with that friend," and you're like, "No, he's cool." And then out of nowhere, he's like, "Why? What happened there?" You know. Right. And um, they had an enemy that is ultimately identified as a condition known as tetanus, which is the one we get from metal, mm -hmm. right? When we're not vaccinated. And Yemaya was always telling her children, please, let's go to Orula's house. Let's get you initiated. I don't care whatever else you do with, with, you know, with, with life and the world and whatnot. But I need you to at least have these things so I can have a peace of mind. The kids didn't do it. They kept doing, you know, their own thing. So Yemaya took it upon herself and she went to visit Orula herself. And she said, I need a way to protect my children. He said, will they come? She said, I've tried that. He said, no worries. Let's do divination and see what comes out. And the Odu Ogunda Trupo comes out where Ifa said that whatever the children needed to do, they could do it to the mother, and it would protect them the same way. Yemaya did all the abos and all the recommendations, and what happened was is not realizing it, Inle and Ochosi were about to, you know, step on a rusty, you know, piece Nail. of metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they did, Tetanus was like, got them, but nothing happened. No convulsions, no constrictions, muscularly, nothing. Yemaya gave them the vaccine from afar by way of her spirituality and practice. And they showed up home and they were like, oh, you never believe this. You know, that, that guy that you told us to stay away from, he poked us today. And she <laughs> said, what happened? He said, nothing. We just, we won't hang around them no more. She, she thanked Orula because Orula saved their children. So um, obviously with the spiritual aspect of things, that's that's awesome. But, you know, how important was it for you to become a mom? And, you know, what role has that played in your life up until this point? Because, yeah, my, yeah, that's her whole thing. Listen, my daughter will be 30 this year, and I'm not going to disclose my age. Go ahead, Ma, go ahead. <laughs> I became a mother at a very, very, very young age. Nice. I had my first child literally at 16 years old. Yes, ma'am. I had my second by 21, and being a mother is something that 
always came naturally to me. But coming from my background and the way that I grew up, it wasn't always as, you know, rose tinted as, as most people's. My background was a little rough dealing with my mother. She had some other issues going on. I don't want to put a business out there. but Yeah, situations. Right. Um, I had to be a mother to my baby sister, Kat. Um, that's even come out in the Misa and saying that don't have any issues with your mom because at that time I was Yabo. They said the woman in the white has been your mother. Nice. And I helped her raise her other five children. They still wow. look at me in a mother position. And being maternal and being able to give, and I don't really honestly, I know where it comes from now, but at an early age, I didn't understand where that would came from, where it came from because I would always joke with my mom, I want seven kids, I want seven kids. And my mom was like, what's wrong with you? What do you mean you want seven kids? That's too many kids. <laughs> I'm like, no, but I did. I really wanted seven kids. But I had my two, and I helped her raise her five. There you I go. got my seven. So That's incredible. Being a mom, honestly, is the most important job on this planet. A yes, mother ma'am. is a nurturer. It's the most important thing, Ifa yes. says. And Ifa says that the most precious thing we have is, is the woman. Because without her, we wouldn't be here. It, we, we wouldn't nothing. exist. But they are providers, protectors, you know, nurturers. This single-handedly is the most important job I've ever had in my life. And it's it's an honor to be able to do that because a lot sometimes people can't do that. And when you get the opportunity to become a mother, I just, oh, yeah. word to the wise, be a good mother. Yeah, I, 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 I feel you completely because we went through a situation of infertility. You know, I'm blessed with four children. I made one a year ago. Wow, congratulations. Um, thank you so much, Ma. And um, the process was strenuous, you know, because we were at different stages of life. Luckily, mm-hmm. by way of Ifa and a lot of faith and hard work, we were able to accomplish the goal, right? Okay. But I tell you, I love all my children equally, but having the opportunity to be able to create one, you know, get them right from the beginning, love on them. Exactly. Um, that's what Yemaya's energy is. It's that warmth. Even, you know, and, and as men, we cannot deny, you know, we have to tap into the estrogen a little bit because, yeah. you know, I'm a girl dad. You know what I'm saying? As far as what <laughs> yes. I made, I, I think it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me because, you know, I am I'm, I'm, I was never an aggressive guy, but, you know, the testosterone and whatnot. But when, when I have this thing in my arms, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's jello. You yeah, know, it, you're, it, you're helpless. It changes everything about you. Yeah. It yeah. changes everything about you in that moment when you look at what you created. Oh, the only thing greater than yourself. Exactly. You know? I couldn't have said it better myself. Everything we've talked about has been emotional and whatnot, but we got to get to the gritty now. Okay. Yemaya so, was a very bad girl. Oh, yeah. She lived with Orula, right? Mm-hmm. Yemaya, everybody talks about Oshun being the ape de bi. Mm-hmm. And she was. She did excellently. But the one who really put in the work was Yemaya, yeah. right? Ochung, she'd serve the tables, she put on the bracelets, it was all good. But the one who really, really, really learned was Yemaya, yeah. even to the point where it got her in trouble. There's various patakis, right? There, um, there's patakis where Orula forgot a song and Yemaya sang it. Mm-hmm. He got pissed off at her. He's like, oh, yeah, but she's like, well, you forgot it. I, I don't want to oh, lose the client. Here, right? That's what I'm saying. That's any Iwario Betty. There's others like in Iroso D where, you know, he came home and she was throwing the chain, you know. Um, you know, you have Obaradila where she cured a guy that Orula kept sick so he can get the money out of him. You know, it was it was just a mess, that house. But one thing is for certain, Yemaya learned. So my question is, is how fulfilling is the study of Ifa for you now? The study of Ifa, Ifa for me is like, I can't even call it a study. It's, it's, it's a way of life, you know. I'm at the stage now, just being only two years old, that my inquisitiveness has just taken off. I want to know everything. I want to read everything. And it's, oh, my goodness, I don't want to get myself in trouble. But I'm going to just go ahead and say it because we're being honest here. You know, there's so many limitations on being a woman and things that I can and cannot do. I know, you know, a part of my process somewhere in time I will have to get a quinado. That's been told to me mm-hmm. when I received Ogun. Especially but, being Ogunte, that's something that comes out a lot for you guys. Yeah, yeah, they said I have to get it, so I'm not in a rush to get that. But And I'm not even really into the sacrifice, but being able to learn certain things, you know, it's very, very secretive. And unfortunately in the Atlanta area, there are not a lot of elder Santeras. You know, I think the oldest one I've actually met is... My godfather's mom, and, you know, she has 36 years in my yard, but wow. she doesn't speak English. Oh, yeah. So, there we go. Know, so <laughs> it's just, you know, Ifa is very fulfilling simply because you know that there's nothing that cannot be resolved without divination and Igbo. 
Yeah. So when I study, when I read, when I take on God, children, and I study their, their, um, oh, no, I study it so I can know this is what happens to my God child and this is what can happen or this, that, and the third. But I'm just really looking forward to learning more because fulfillment is an understatement. It's an, because it's me. It's what I eat, sleep, and breathe every day. I don't know what to do without this, you know, and I don't want to sound like a fanatic or a person that's just overboard with it. But when you love something and it's coming from a genuine place, you want to learn it. You never honestly learn everything, but you want to get it to as close as perfect as you can. And if you're dedicated to it, it just it's rewarding when you see people elevate. And that's honestly what I want to do. So, this, like I said, I can't say how much it fulfills me because I feel like it is a part of me. It just it it's just, beyond that. Yes. And you guys, by nature, you're very talented people. I mean, within the religion, I mean. The best mediums um, I've ever met, for the most part, besides my wife and a couple other people, children of Yemaya, right? Some of the best oriates I've ever met. You know, we lost a great one in Pedrito El Sahuero, Lomi Lomi. He was a, one of the most well-known oriates. He died in Venezuela, I think, within the last year and a half. Oh, wow. Condolences. Son of Yemaya, you know, Babalaos. You know, like El Marinero was, uh, Eyobe was a son of Yemaya, and Bebo El Mocongo, the oldest Babalao in Cuba when he passed away. Wow, I've, I've heard about him. Bebo El yeah. Mocongo, Baba Eyobe, yeah. You know, just if, if you guys are in it, it's because you're meant to accomplish something, right. right? And it makes sense because look at all that your mother encompassed. Like, my godmother was married to a Babalao. She knew quite a bit. My wife's godmother, married to a Babalao, she knew quite a bit. Right. So here we go with you. Mm -hmm. How important was it for you to have a partner that was involved in this spirituality and was going to support you as you were moving forward? Mandatory. There you go. Mandatory. You know, this is my life. It's not negotiable. So me dealing with someone that does not accept, respect, or participate or practice what I do is just it's not reasonable for me because mm -hmm. it's going... They have to understand what I'm saying, what I'm doing, you know, with, like you said, with the mediumship. Like, if I'm having a conversation and something, like, he's, my husband seen me do it. I might just, something might come out of my mouth. I've told him I've seen different things on people, and lo and behold, two weeks later, it comes to fruition. And he's like, Whoa. and we could be out to eat, and I tell this girl, hey, be careful with such and such, you know. You can't be with a regular person doing stuff like no, that. No, it's <laughs> they're they're just, like, hey, you ever wait. seen the Long Island medium? The husband's like, oh, man, here she goes right. again. Man, I can't get a slice of pizza now with this woman. He's done that before. They're like, don't start that right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're normal right now. We're just, right. Trying, to, we're just trying to live. Not right now, right. No, but that's awesome. And, and from what I've noticed, it, it has to be like that because Yemaya, her, her followers had a natural predisposition towards this and towards Orula. Mm -hmm. You know, she was right there, you know, so... I, you know, you, you have your botanica. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Her Thank is doing you. well. Um, Yemaya was a moneymaker. Yeah. She was after the bag, you That's know. Me. When you look at Odiche, Yemaya put, you know, she laced Ochum's pockets. Mm -hmm. And in the Odu of Iwariwosa was where Yemaya became Olokun's personal accountant. And, and what happened was is Olokun, he had a lot of products, he had money, but he didn't have a lot of time. Right. You know, and he didn't, He it caused him to get unorganized. And because of it, the waves weren't moving. Certain resources weren't making it to humanity. And, uh, you know, he was having some serious issues. So Yemaya saw an opportunity. And she went to a local and said, hey, you trust me with everything else. Maybe you should trust me with your money. Because I can make you more of it and I can protect you from losing what you already have. I see. And Olokun was like, well, when you put it like that, I mean, what do, what do we have to debate, you know? Right. And that's when he made her, or you know, his personal financial advisor, assistant, distributor, whatever you want to call it. And till then, now, the ocean is perfect. Mm -hmm. We get the water we need. We get the fish we need, the minerals, the oil, whatever it is. Who facilitates that is Yemaya, because she's the one that allows us to go into the water to get what we need. So I ask you, you know, being a daughter of Yemaya, being an entrepreneur, when did that kind of start arising with you where you're like, hey, I need to work for me? Well, all of my life I've always had like an entrepreneurship type of spirit. My nice. father, outside of being a minister, owned his own business. He did upholstery for like 50-something years. Wow. And with my mother being a musician, I never saw either one of them punch a clock. It Word. was a, a nine-to-five in my house. Word. I mean, even as a kid, I always thought, I had my first job at 14. I always wanted my own money, yeah. you know, 
but I never ever saw myself like dedicating myself to working for somebody else. And even when I did work, it was I was a bartender. Yeah. That I could de- you know determine how much I make if I wink you know a couple extra times. This guy might get an extra five well, bucks. Might, you know, yeah, we might you might get another one. You know. <laughs> right. You know, and that's. That was the closest thing to being self-employed at that time. And plus, it kind of gave me the liberty to focus more on what I need to focus on, which my kids, because it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is when I make the majority of my money. Yeah. My kids are out of school. I don't have to be at home. But for me, entrepreneurship was always something I knew I would get to. Because yeah, yeah, my God, just she don't play about the money. We're gonna go get that. No, she's always she's always <laughs> had the bag in her hand. Yes, you know, like that. But um, yeah, in that regard, I mean. We look at, apart from the economic aspect of things, um, we touched on how wonderful you guys are as mediums and how, you know, in the beginning that could be difficult because when you're getting all this spirituality thrown at you and you're not familiar with it and then you have to learn how to live a normal life while hearing all these things, you know, getting all these intuitions. You look at the Odu of Otura Iwori or Otura Pompeo, it speaks of when Yemaya became unstable because spiritually things were too out of whack there was too many energies around her um and she had to visit orula and go through her processes um to be able to find that tranquility right you know i ask you being fully crowned now um having a practice having god children you know really experimenting your your faith you know how has it changed for you now how has the how train how has the serenity been you know as far as spiritually the difference it's it's indescribable i mean when you go through the process of crowning your head Orisha, you get to hear from every last one of the Orisha. You get to hear what Elegua has to say. You get to hear what Obatala has to say, what Shango has to say, what Ochun has to say. So it gives me a clear direction. I know as long as I stay within this advice, how my life will go. So it's certain things that I just don't worry about anymore. You know, I know this is, this is, with you, Arkea, so you know you really have to watch this, or maybe you need to move forward and go this way. I'm as calm as I've ever been in my life, and you know, by being Yemaya's daughter, you know, a lot of people were afraid of. I mean, before before now, let's just put it this way: I had a terrible, terrible, terrible temper. Mm-hmm. You know, it was not so good. You know, people would be like, "Oh, don't say that," or "Don't do that." Not that I was a you know snappy person, but. I didn't have like a gauge. I didn't go to, you know, angry and fuss you out. We weren't switching gears. We were just pressing yeah, just, the pedal and going off. That's yeah. exactly what it was. And now it's like it takes so long to push my buttons. It's like my patience has increased. My tolerance has increased. And just the general understanding for people yeah. has increased. It's, it's, it's priceless. I can honestly tell you that it, it keeps me out of a lot of things. That's good. I mean, you know, as we go through these stages, these Orishas were human beings as well. Because, you know, you look at a young Shango who was a complete disaster, and then you look at when he was, you know, fulfilled 40, 45, you're like, whoa, what happened to the guy before? He doesn't right. exist. That's why Ifa says it's not that we forget the past, but we don't have to live with the past right. because everybody has a past. It's better to just leave that there. It served its purpose. We didn't make too many horrible mistakes, so let's just move yeah, on. Yeah, we made it. So let's... We made it. So, you know, we survived it. We were able to overcome. So, you know, it's time to move on. And it's interesting um, you mentioned her character, right, or your character, more importantly, because, you know, there's Patakis, um, where it speaks of Yemaya throwing the machete at the wall. You know, she beat up Ogun one time. You know, like, she just, you know, she, and and knowing a couple children of Yemaya, without saying no names, they get it in. Yeah. You know, so it's better just, you know, understand limits and, and boundaries, yeah, and you, you'll people, be good with them. Yeah, I tell people, pick and choose your battles, especially when you're dealing with a child of yeah, Yemaya. That, that water is unpredictable. Yeah, it's and scary. It's, yeah, it, it can be that the temperament of her children can be extremely intense. You know, it's nothing you can do with that. The ocean when it's angered. It's the only thing you can do is try to endure it if it doesn't take you with it. And that's what I tell people. Like, I'm peaceful. Let's leave me peaceful. I tell you, you know, and you go from that to, you know, other aspects of her character. Yemaya was a beautiful soul. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you look at an animal such as the swan, you know, and, and you look at, because it's beautiful, it's elegant. It's a dangerous bird, though, ironically. You know, you, if you ruffle its feathers, mm-hmm. right? But Yemaya was consistently in a place where she was protecting or healing someone, 
right? When you look at, you know, the Odu of Odika, where she had to save Ochun's life, and we mentioned Odiche, where she was always there for her people. How important it is, how important, and you speaking of playing a motherly role, even to your, your nephews and nieces, how important has it been through life to provide that aid and be there for people that you love so much? I cannot remember a time in my life where I wasn't doing that, you know, giving and being there for my family and for my friends, you know, it's, I'm almost tearing up now. So give me a second. You know, it's, it's what I am. Yeah. I don't know how not to give. I don't know how not to be there for my loved ones. And even when it comes to people that I don't know, I don't like to see suffering. I like to see people comfortable. I like to see them flourishing. I like to see them happy and in, the be in their best selves. And there's not a time in my life where I can remember not caring, you know, about humanity in general. I could, as a kid, I would see people hungry and I might, mommy, can we please give money? Mommy, can we get something to eat? And all the way down to animals and cats and straight, I'm like, feed it, mommy. Like, it needs to eat. It needs a place to stay. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually been that person that someone has to call in the middle of the night and they need something and as sure as I'm sitting here I'm going that's a part of my character and I, I mean that with everything that I am I don't ever want my family or people that are close to me to ever feel like that I won't be there the only time I won't be there is when I'm able and even then I'll still be there yeah and um it's commendable because that's that's a really common theme with you guys. Mm -hmm. It's the shirt on your back, whether yes. it's your time, whether it's your energy. Um, loyal to the T. Yeah. Always there. The water's always there. It's mm -hmm. interesting because you look at that concept, there's nothing water can't penetrate. Correct. There's nothing that will interrupt you guys from helping those that you care about because there is no such thing as obstacles. You've overcome them all to get where yes. you are now. You know. What would you say... To all of those newly identified children of Yemaya who are having difficulties understanding themselves and the energy they're meant to align with. What I would tell a newly found child of Yemaya is first and foremost, congratulations. Sure, you sure, You just sure. hit the jackpot. <laughs> You're the child of luck. You word, know. word, word. Um, definitely study her. And one thing about it is that nature does not lie. It cannot. Nope. If you study the ocean and you study the components of what it is, it will actually explain to you more about what you are. When you look at the surface of it, it can seem sometimes it's peaceful, sometimes it's turbulent, but it's always giving. It's always there. It's a permanent affixation. It covers 80% of the world. Oh, yeah, for a reason. And when you understand how large Yemaya is, you know, um, when I crowned, a gentleman told me, he said, you know, I think he was Shango Yemaya. He was Oni Oni. And he came to me and he said, listen, he said, your mother's very grand and very vast. He said, I always want you to remember exactly how I tell this to you. He said, you never, ever tell Yemaya how big your problem is. You tell your problem how big Yemaya is. I sure. And I stand on that. Yeah. There's nothing that we can't get through. And once they understand the majesty of who their mother is, they will be confident in moving forward with their learning process, with moving forward with Ifa. They they will be confident in what it is that they are doing because they know no matter what, she's there and she's going to be there to protect them and guide them and nourish them for all of the days. Majesty. She's magic. She's your majesty. That's a word. Yeah. This one's big. What does Yemaya mean to you? And what would you say to her if you had the opportunity? I know I'm supposed to keep talking, but... Um. <laughs> <laughs> one rule and one rule only. Keep talking. I know. I, I'm sorry. Um, oh, man. Um, if I could actually have an honest conversation with you and my yacht, I have nothing to say, but thank you. That's all she needs. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I don't know how... I got so lucky. I don't know what I did in the past life to deserve the things that she has given me and the, the opportunity that she affords me. But only thing I can say is thank you. She's the greatest thing in my life. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. It's okay. I do this sometimes, you yeah, know, but that's okay. how we know it's real. The water's yeah. got to flow, yeah, you know, but <laughs> I tell you, um, if you don't feel that way about your guardian, Orisha, you're doing something wrong, yeah. you know. Um what a tsunami. 
Miss Arkea, what a conversation. Um, it's everything I honestly wanted it to be. We've delved into so many aspects of this beautifully complex woman, <laughs> and I, I think you embody all of them. Thank you know, you. and I think we Thank made a fabulous decision in having you on because you are uh, prototypical. Yeah. Daughter of Yamaya. Yes. Any day. Yeah. Right. Any day. And that's that's what we need. We need people to live those positive aspects while still living their truth. It's yes. not that we're hiding who we are. It's just that we are what we are, but doing the right thing at the same time. You know, um, any final thoughts for our roots uh, podcast community? Please let them know what do you have going on? What's next for Akira and your organization? What do you want them to know? Well, we're just really just getting the wheels turning. We just um, finished our first year of being open. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we're about to just start, really start marketing some things, but definitely we want to start having classes inside of the store where we're teaching people more about the religion and how do they get started and the correct way to do things. Because, yes, you know, it's a lot of things in Atlanta that you know, or a little iffy sometimes. Yeah. But we want people to get the help they need, and that's why we're there. I didn't open the store to turn a huge profit or become a multimillionaire. I put it there because the community needs it. Those Iwas is there to educate. Those Iwas is there to help. It's there to listen. It's there to counsel. And we just want people to start coming out and saying, hey, listen, this is I'm interested. You know, we want to remove the stigma that's attached to Ifa, Santeria, Voodoo, whatever it or Apollo. I want to remove that a stigma that's attached to it because we're not bad people. You know, people are like, oh, you no, know. No, we're all right. I'm yeah, worried about other people. We're good. Right, right. <laughs> so we just want to get the opportunity to reach out to our community and let them know that, hey, it's real help here. You know, we're not going to run you around in the circle. One thing about E5 is a direct answer. This is, you know, you got a problem, you go get divination, you do your Evo. The problem's going to be resolved. And we want people to be, you know, to actually know that and see the results of that. So, you know, our people can quit running around like chicken with their heads cut off. They need help. Yes, ma'am. And, um, you know, I, I know that demographic over there, you know, in Atlanta. And um, it's it's right for the picking in all the right ways and the way you guys are doing it, having met you and your camp. Um, I think uh, there's a great option over there now, yeah. you know, sincerely. And um, I want to say, may Olo Dumare, may Urumila, may Egun, may Yemoja, may all of them bless you guys. And thank I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to sit with us. And I, I think this is going to be a fabulous episode. I think it's probably going to be our most viewed one yet because oh, Yemaya wow. has fans. <laughs> oh, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. No, thank you for having me. The honor was mine. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Continue to educate and quick keep you know, keep being that light that all of us need because you give us way more than the podcast. You give us inspiration because a lot of us, you know, we wanna know more and sometimes it's hard for us to access that and you're actually doing that and you know, my hat is off to you and anything I could ever do to support you, just let me know. I appreciate you, Ma. Thank you. Here we go. All right. What a conversation, family. We made it. Um, Botanica Candles and More is up and running, um, where you can find services, products, et cetera. We're going to have Miss Arkea's information as well if you want to get in contact over there in Atlanta with Dos Aguas. Be on the lookout for that. Um, Our Roots podcast is available on all platforms. The membership program is up and running. We can't wait to see you there. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And thank you from Our Roots Podcast. And until next time, see the light. <laughs>